Hello friends, it's me, Shin, and today I'm coming to you from the newly opened Durango station in the southwest part of the Las Vegas Valley. Now this is the first station casino that's been built from the ground up in over a decade and they've included a brand new food hall in Eat Your Heart Out. There's an all-star lineup of food stalls as well as full-service restaurants here and it's looking really good. I can't wait to show them all to you. Are you excited? Because I'm excited. Let's do this. All right, everyone, so I'm seated here at the Eat Your Heart Out Food Hall, and I absolutely love this space. Super well lit in here. You actually even have natural light, which is pretty rare for a casino space, I would say. You have a really nice mix of full-service restaurants as well as food stalls here in the food hall, and I love that each of these locations have a unique architecture, giving them a lot of personality. Now, I'm really looking forward to trying out all of the spots here at the Eat Your Heart Out Food Hall, and I'm thinking about starting off with a little bit of breakfast over at Vesta Coffee Roasters. And what's really cool about them is that they had their start right here in Las Vegas. It looks like they opened up in 2016 here in the Valley, and it's really cool that they've got a location at Durango Station. Now, not only are they a full-service coffee shop, but they're also offering baked goods, plenty of pastries and sandwiches as well. Looks like the majority of the coffee drinks here range from $4 to $5, and a lot of the bakery goods seem to be roughly $10. Now to kick things off, I got an Americano as well as an avocado toast. Now I'm really looking forward to starting off the food tour. Let's give this a try. Alrighty, first up, I'm gonna go ahead and try this iced Americano. Now to be honest with you, I'm not exactly a coffee aficionado, but I am actually pretty tired, so the caffeine feels welcome. Let's give it a shot. Yeah, that's good. I typically get my coffee black. I don't really add a lot of sweeteners or anything like that. And it's got a nice bitter flavor. I wouldn't say the flavor is super bold. It is a little bit light, but I am definitely looking forward to the caffeine boost that's gonna be coming my way. Let's try this avocado toast up next. Now this is a pretty good looking avocado toast here. Definitely looking forward to a nice light bite to start off the day. Let's see how this is. Oh yeah, I definitely got some mixed feelings on this one. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the avocado here. It's rich, it's creamy, it's ripe, it tastes well seasoned, and you can tell because you can actually see that chunky salt on top. The red pepper flakes do add a tiny amount of heat, although I wouldn't say a ton, but in general, I really don't have any complaints with the avocado. My biggest issue is that the bread is not toasted. It is just sliced sourdough bread. I thought the name would imply that the bread would be toasted. Maybe they should just call it avocado bread. And what's really unfortunate about that is that the bread itself is actually quite good. The exterior has a nice crunch to that crust, and the center of the bread is very airy. But it is such a travesty to not have that toasted and buttered. I'm genuinely surprised that's not part of the recipe. Now, they did provide some lemon along with this, so I'm going to go ahead and apply it. We'll see how that changes things up. You know what, that is nicer. The lemon certainly brings a lot of brightness and freshness to the bite, but it doesn't solve my chief complaint, which is that I really want some crunchy toast texture when it comes to this avocado toast. But hey, you know what, my iced Americano is pretty good. All right, now that was a pretty light way to start off the day. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this avocado toast, and then I think I want a little bit more before I head into work. I'm in the mood for a sandwich. We're gonna try Pauly sandwiches next. All right, everyone, I know I said I was gonna get a sandwich next, but the Uncle Pauly line was insanely long, so I went with a pizza instead. The resident pizza shop here at the Durango Food Hall is Prince Street Pizza. Now they're serving up what they call Soho Squares as well as thin style New York pizza, and so I definitely had to try both. Let me show you what I got. Now for my New York slice, I went with what's called the Oaky Smoky. This is a cheese slice that has smoked mozzarella as well as basil, and I also went with their meat lover Soho Square. Definitely looking forward to trying these out. Alrighty, first up, let's try this oaky, smoky, thin crust pizza. You can smell the basil on this slice from a mile away, and it is looking really good. Let's give it a try. You know, that was a very tasty slice. I love the crust here. I love the toasty underside, and it actually has a really great texture. Ever so slightly chewy in the center, with a really nice crisp on that bottom. You definitely get that basil up front. It's really aromatic and very floral in flavor. But it's the cheese on this oaky, smoky slice that is a true star. It's much more pungent than your standard mozzarella. And it's a very rich cheese as well, leading to a very satisfying bite. You know, I have no serious complaints. This is really good pizza. Alrighty, next up we're gonna try the Soho Square. I went with the meat lovers today. 
certainly earned the name Meat Lovers. There's a ton of meat on top of this. Let's give it a shot. Oh yeah, that's really tasty. Right up front, I got a ton of the salty and spiciness from that pepperoni. I actually do appreciate that the pepperoni is slightly spicy here. The sausage is also very rich, but there's actually a very slight sweetness to it. And there's also a nice salty, smoky flavor coming from the chopped bacon bits here as well. I'm definitely getting to taste the sauce a lot more on the Soho Square than I did on the Slinger Slice. And in general, I would actually say it's pretty good. A much more savory sauce, they've definitely cooked out a ton of the sweetness. I will say that while the cheese provides a lot of richness, you don't get a ton of flavor there. It's masked by a lot of the salty, savory flavors from the meats. I have a little bit of mixed feelings on the crust here. While there is a nice crunch coming from the bottom, it is a little doughy in the center. It doesn't detract from it too much, but it is a little improvement I would like to see. But in general, no serious complaints. This is really good pizza. Alright everyone, and I'd say that's a really nice start to the Eat Your Heart Out food haul here at the Durango Station. I gotta tell you, what I love about making these food haul videos is that I can kind of make the video throughout the week and fill out a ton of meals without having to do a ton of leftovers. So I'm gonna be heading to work now, but I'm gonna be back later in the day to try out another spot or two. Don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. Alright folks, so I'm back here at the Eat Your Heart Out Food Hall. Uncle Polly's Sandwiches is where I'm going to be hitting up. Let me go in and give you a view of the place. Now Uncle Polly's is a sandwich shop with its origins in Los Angeles. They're serving up plenty of breakfast sandwiches as well as your daily lunch and dinner sandwiches. Now it looks like the majority of their sandwiches kind of range in that $15 price point. And I ordered the Carmine Sandwich today, which is roast beef, mozzarella, gravy on garlic bread. It sounds super rich, but it also sounded really delicious. And my order just came up. Let me give you a view of that sandwich. Now definitely at first glance, the meat to bread ratio is a little skewed here. Lots of bread, not a ton of meat. But at the end of the day, it is all about the flavor. So let's see how the Carmine sandwich is here at Uncle Polly's. Okay, that sandwich is really tasty. I love the texture of the bread. Ultra airy and really soft. Whatever garlic butter they've applied here has a ton of flavor. Lots of richness as well as that tiny hint of spice coming from the garlic. But really, that's just the beginning. The roast beef is incredibly tender. Though there's not a ton of it in the sandwich, you certainly get that nice meaty beefy flavor that you're looking for. The gravy is definitely outstanding. You get it toward the middle of the bite and it's really rich and very savory. You definitely get richness from the mozzarella, though I wouldn't say you get a ton of that cheesy flavor, but it comes together very well. The sandwich is undeniably tasty. That said though, if they were to double the amount of meat that came in the sandwich, I would just be over the moon about it. Very tasty though, I'm a huge fan of the flavors. All right folks, that was a really good sandwich and I gotta get back to work, but I think I'm gonna try one other little snack before I head out. Let's get some ice cream. All right everyone, so before I head back to work, I'm going in on some Nielsen's frozen custard. Now you can think of custard as a much more thick ice cream. It's made fresh daily at Nielsen's. I used to go to the one over at the Red Rock pretty often, so I'm super excited that another one is open here at the Durango. Now typically when I come to Nielsen's, I always go for a Fruity Pebbles Concrete. They'll take your favorite toppings and mix it very evenly and distribute it through a really big bowl of custard. And it's gonna be such a nice sugary treat before I head back to work right now. I'm telling you guys, this is thick. You just see how dense this custard is. It moves the cup with my spoon inside. I'd say let's see how this is, but I'm pretty positive it's gonna be amazing. Absolutely delicious. I really do love the custard in Nielsen's. It's so thick and so rich. It is instant sugary satisfaction as soon as it enters your mouth. One thing I will say about all the times I've been to Nielsen's is that I have never had stale toppings, which is huge for me, because Fruity Pebbles does have a tendency to go stale pretty quickly if you leave that bag open. But the syrup is super fresh in my custard here, offering that nice artificial fruity flavor that comes from Fruity Pebbles. This is legitimately one of my favorite treats in Las Vegas, and I'm happy to know that there's one about 15 minutes closer to me now. Hopefully this doesn't cause a super sugar crash when I get to work after this. Now I've got to get back to work, but I'm going to be returning later this evening to try one of their sit-down restaurants next. Don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. Alright everyone, so I've returned for dinner here and I'm at Shang Artisan Noodle. 
this is one of the sit-down locations available at Eat Your Heart Out, and it's one I've been really looking forward to because I love the location on Flamingo. Unfortunately, the parking lot can be pretty abysmal sometimes. I have a pretty standard go-to order when I come to Shang Artisan Noodle, but let's go and take a look at the menu. So here is your menu at Shang Artisan Noodle. You can see all of the side dishes up front, and there are two different types of noodles you can get, hand pulled or knife cut. Here are all of your noodle soups. All looking really excellent here. On the other side of the menu, we have your sauce noodles and well of extra items. Your beverages, chow mein, and fried rice here as well. Looking really good. And I've definitely been looking forward to Sean opening here at Durango Station. I've got my order in and I'll catch you in a little bit when my food arrives. All right, everyone, so my beef noodles are here. This is looking incredible. Let me give you a view. Now, this is my standard go-to order at Chong Artisan Noodle, a Taiwanese beef noodle soup that's really rich and has a lot of depth. Definitely cannot wait to give this a try. First off, we're going in on the broth. Now, I believe Chong Artisan Noodle goes with a chicken and beef broth. Got a nice spoonful here. Let's give it a taste. Oh yeah, very tasty soup. There's a lot of beefy flavor there, very savory. The broth is also very rich with how much of the fat from the beef has been able to render into it. You get a little bit of bite from the green onion that's present here, and there's a nice spicy kick on the back end, a really good spicy aftertaste. So far, the broth is a winner. Now, when it comes to your noodle options, you have both hand-pulled as well as knife cut. Hand-pulled is a little bit thinner, definitely thicker noodles when it comes to the knife cut. I typically prefer hand-pulled. Let's give it a shot. Yeah, that's really nice. Really great cook on those noodles. They're firm and have a great chew. Initially, you do get the flavors of the broth, but then ultimately it gives way to that noodle flavor. It's a little bit starchy and it's a great vessel for the soup here. No serious complaint with the noodles. Then separately, we'll go ahead and try the beef. I believe this is a brisket cut, and you can tell by the color that it's soaked up so much of this delicious flavor. Let's give it a try. Oh yeah, that beef is excellent. Super tender, you can actually see how it just falls apart with a little pressure from my chopsticks. While it's been able to soak up a ton of those spices, it still is able to retain a lot of its nice beefy flavor. It's rich, fatty, and incredibly delicious. I really like the beef. And then the last element of this soup is the bok choy. Nice vibrant green color to this. See how it is. Oh yeah, very good. What I love about the introduction of the bok choy is that it presents a different textural element. While the beef is super tender and you've got a great chew with those noodles, the bok choy provides a crunchy element that's really welcome to break up a lot of that bite. The bok choy comes with its trademark bitterness while still allowing you to really enjoy those spicy flavors of the beef soup. I absolutely love it. They've translated the recipe from the Flamingo location here perfectly. All right, everyone, and my other go-to dish just arrived. Let me give you a view. These are the spicy wontons and chili oil, and it is a classic dish in Chinese cuisine, and I'm super pumped for this one. You know, unfortunately, I'd say that's just okay today. Off the bat, I'm actually not a huge fan of the texture of the wonton skin today. It's a little gummy, almost feels undercooked. But that said, the pork filling is quite nice. It's grounded, so it's certainly tender, and it's actually very well seasoned. You've got a nice pork flavor here. The chili oil certainly has some heat, but it's a little more mild than I'm typically used to. And I do think they went a little heavy handed with the sesame oil in that chili oil because there's a lot of extra nuttiness. It's not bad, but I've certainly had better preparations. All right, everyone, and that does it for my dinner here at Shang Artisan Noodle. I'm gonna go ahead and keep working on this, and I think I might check out one more spot here at the food hall. I'll catch you over there in a little bit. All right, everyone, now I really enjoyed my dinner over at Shang Artisan Noodle, but now it's time for a drink before I close out my night, and I'm here at the drink bar. Now, this is a full-service bar, and they've got games here that you can play, as well as plenty of drinks. Those who watch the channel often know I'm more of a social drinker. I don't really drink too often, but I think I'm going to go and do a little bit of gaming tonight, so I want to get in the mood with a little bit of a drink. They've got plenty of frozen mixed drinks here, and I think I'm going to be going in on this lemonade. There's a beautiful color to this, served with a mint leaf as well as a lemon. Now this did clock in at $17.50, so it's not cheap by any means. But hopefully it puts me in a winning mode when I hit the tables. Cheers to you. Mm. 
I will say that's actually very nice. It's not just the mint leaf on the top, you actually get that nice cooling flavor throughout the entire beverage. Now I don't taste too much of the alcohol, which is probably a dangerous thing, but in general it is sweet and tasty. You certainly get a nice tart, sour flavor from that lemonade, and in general it's a pretty tasty drink. Granted that it's pretty small for $17.50. Now there's still one more eatery I want to try tonight, but I'm absolutely stuffed, so I think I'm going to go ahead and hit the tables, maybe hit some slot machines, and there's a spot here that's 24 hours that I'm going to be hitting a little bit later on. Don't go anywhere, I'll be right back when I see you at the Oyster Bar. my friends I am back here at Durango station and I'm going to the oyster bar it's currently 2 30 in the morning and there's still a line here the oyster bar was made incredibly popular by palace station but now I believe the majority of station casinos actually have one on the resort and I'm certainly hoping the one here at Durango lives up to the reputation now there's only 18 seats at the oyster bar so the line was quite long I waited almost three hours to be seated today now I do have a go-to order that I like to stick to when I go to an oyster bar at a station casino, but let's go ahead and take a look at the menu. Maybe I might veer off course today. So here is the menu at Oyster Bar. You have your chilled seafood up top as well as some starters here. I always love getting some of that clam chowder, so I'm definitely going to be trying that today. Here are the kettle favorites. The pan roast is what they're known for and probably what I'll, well, you know, I think I'll probably just be sticking to what I typically get, which is the combination. Here are some house specialties as well, chipino, etouffee, all looking really good. And then your cocktails and beverages down here. I was kind of contemplating trying something different today, but I'm going to go with Old Faithful. It's going to be at the clam chowder and a combination pan roast. I'll see you in a little bit when that shows up. Now while I am waiting for the main portions of my meal today, they do offer included bread. Nice little sourdough loaf here. I'm going to apply some butter and we give it a taste. Oh yeah, that's fine. A crusty sourdough loaf here. Definitely has a crusty exterior, while the center remains airy and soft. I wouldn't say anything out of the ordinary, but it is a good sourdough bread, and the butter certainly provides a nice richness in the bite. No serious complaints, I'm glad this comes along with the meal. Alrighty, now while the bread was a nice start, I'm definitely in the mood for this clam chowder that just arrived. Let me give you a view. A really thick looking New England clam chowder. Got a nice spoonful here. Even though it's almost three in the morning, I'm really looking forward to this. Let's give it a taste. Oh yeah, that's really good. I absolutely love the consistency of this chowder. It's so thick and creamy. Not watered down at all, the flavors are very robust. You definitely get a little bit of the sweet brininess from the clams, and there's big chunks all throughout the chowder, which is really appreciated. The potatoes in the chowder are cooked perfectly. Soft enough to bite through, but they're still holding a nice texture. The chowder in general is very well seasoned, not bland by any means. Now let me know in the comments, do you also like to crumble up crackers in your soup? I know this isn't exactly for everybody, but I certainly appreciate the extra salty crunch and texture that comes from doing this. Get a little spoonful here, and we give it a try. Yeah, like I said, absolutely love getting that extra crunchy texture in there. While the potatoes hold up a little bit to the creaminess of the chowder, getting that extra crunch element is really satisfying. And the crackers themselves also give a little bit of a salty burst in flavor. Such a fan, I'm really happy to know that the Durango Station's Oyster Bar's clam chowder is just as good as all the others. Alright everyone, now the clam chowder was really nice, but my pan roast is here and this looks really good. Let me give you a view. I got the combination pan roast, which comes with shrimp, crab, and lobster. Also served with steamed rice. Really looking forward to this, let's give it a go. First up, let's just go and try the gravy. Got a nice spoonful here. Let's see how it tastes. You know, I'll say that's just a little off. It definitely has a bit of a watery consistency, and the flavor is reflected. I feel like there definitely needs to be a little bit more butter here, as well as cream, because in general the gravy is lacking a bit of richness. 
Now on a spicy scale from 1 to 10, I asked for a 6, but this is much spicier than I'm typically used to. Now while the heat levels are a little higher than I'm used to, I will say there is a nice garlic flavor here. They've added an ample amount, which does give the gravy a bit of a nice dimension. I wouldn't say it's bad, but I will say it's definitely lacking a little bit of additional richness. It really could use a little bit of additional butter and cream. Now we're going to try the rest of this pan roast, starting with the lobster. Really looking forward to this. You know, that was pretty nice. It soaked up a ton of heat, and there was actually a really nice chunky garlic clove in the middle of that lobster tail, so it gave me a nice burst of flavor. Texture-wise, the lobster was a tiny bit rubbery, but it actually did have a nice sweet flavor to it. Honestly, not bad at all. I do like the lobster in here. Next up, let's try the shrimp. Let's see how it tastes. Oh well, yeah, that's pretty good. Super plump, it was actually much more succulent than the lobster was. A good firm chew to it. I will say the shrimp flavor was a little muted. I heavily tasted the spices of the pan roast as opposed to the actual shrimp flavor. But I definitely did like the texture of the shrimp much more than the lobster. And the last included seafood to try is the crab. I was able to extract a nice amount of the meat from the leg here. Let's give this a taste. You know, unfortunately, that was a little disappointing. I was actually expecting the most amount of sweetness coming from the crab as opposed to the other two meats. But unfortunately, the crab in this particular case was relatively flavorless. All I tasted was the gravy. I'm not sure if that has to do with the quality of the crab leg, but I distinctly remember tasting much more of the sweetness from the crab in a pan roast before. Alrighty, lastly, I'm going to go ahead and add some rice to the mix. Let's give it a shot. Yeah, I like it with the rice. Just adds a little bit more body to the bite, and oddly enough, it actually makes some of that heat linger. I grew up with rice, I can eat rice with just about anything, and it's certainly a welcome addition with the pan roast. Alright everyone, now in general I wouldn't say this is the worst pan roast I've ever had, but it's certainly not the best in Las Vegas. Now truth be told, I ate so much throughout the day today, and it's 3.30 in the morning, so I think I'm going to go ahead and pack this up and take it on home to go, because I've got work in the morning. Now I've got four more restaurants that I need to try here at Eat Your Heart Out, so I'm going to be back tomorrow for some lunch. Don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. All right, everyone, so I'm back here at the Durango for lunch today, and I'm starting off with Herb's Burgers. Yeah. Now, Herb's Burgers is incredibly popular in California, apparently, and they've had their start in Malibu. I actually never tried it when I lived in California, so I'm looking forward to seeing how they are here with all the hype. Now, they serve breakfast from 7 to 11 a.m., and then their lunch menu starts at 11. And so I just got my order, and this is looking really good. Let me give you a view. Now, I got a single cheeseburger combo that comes with fries as well as a drink. But I also heard really good things about their chili cheese dog, so I wanted to give that a try as well. This is all looking really good. Let's give it a taste. Alrighty, first up, taking a bite of the burger. Solid looking single cheeseburger here. Let's give it a taste. You know what, that's pretty good. I actually really do like the flavor of the burger meat. It's very well seasoned. The American cheese is melty and rich. And the quality of the vegetables here are pretty solid as well. Now the burger sauce applied here is called Herb Sauce. Now it is very rich, however there's not a ton of flavor to it. But it does keep the bite from being dry. I think my only real complaint on the burger is that my bottom bun is so soggy. You can see it's actually almost turned into a bread paste. Despite the fact that they did toast the bun, unfortunately the super wet lettuce actually led to a lot of moisture being brought into that bread. I feel like I would want to investigate the order of toppings assembled in the burger, that way you can kind of get around that issue. Now I wouldn't say this is the best burger I've ever had, but it's certainly solid, no real complaints. Let's go ahead and give these fries a try. I mean they look like pretty standard french fries to me. Let's see how they stack up. Yeah, you know what, that's fine. They've got a good fry job on them, they are very crispy. Simply seasoned with just salt. It's not a bad fry by any means, just nothing super special here. Alrighty, last but certainly not least for my lunch, I want to try this chili cheese dog. I actually love the fact that the bun is toasted in this way, and hopefully it's really good. Let's give it a taste. Oh yeah, that's actually really tasty. I absolutely love the bread here. It's been beautifully toasted and a lot of butter has been applied giving some richness. The chili is also very good. It's meaty, ever so slightly spicy, with a good smoky flavor as well. Really savory and I love the spice blend. 
The hot dog itself is nice. A little snap to that casing. It's a good meaty hot dog that you got a great flavor from in the middle of the bite before the chili really starts to take over. You know, I'm a fan. I actually really like this chili cheese dog. All right, everyone, and that's my lunch here at Irv's Burgers. Not bad at all, although I will say it's kind of a long way for what is relatively pretty standard food. But in general, it is tasty. I'm enjoying myself. Now, there's only three sit-down restaurants remaining that I'm gonna have to hit here at the Eat Your Heart Out Food Hall, and I'll be back for dinner later tonight where I'm gonna try one of the three. Don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. All right, everybody, so I am back for dinner, and I decided to go with Aipono Cafe Hawaiian Street Food for dinner. Now, I opted to get their lollipop shrimp as well as their chef's plate. This is all looking really good. Time to give it a try. All righty, first up, it's the lollipop shrimp. Let's give it a shot. Oh, yeah, that's really good. Ultra crispy on the outside. I actually love the breading. It's well seasoned. It has a nice salty flavor. The shrimp inside is super succulent. And I love how well the breading is coated to the shrimp. You know they had ultra piping hot oil. This is really good fried shrimp. Let's dip it into the sauce that they have here. And we give this a shot as well. Oh yeah, that sauce is delicious. It's a really garlicky sweet chili sauce with a clean sweet flavor with just a hint of heat at the very end. I'm a fan, I actually really like the shrimp lollipop appetizer. That was a really great start to the dinner with those lollipop shrimp, and now it's time to go in on the main, and I got the chef's plate. Now the chef's plate comes with mahi-mahi, as well as teriyaki beef, some ahi pokey, as well as rice and mac. This is looking really good, time to give it a try. All right, first up, trying the mahi-mahi. This cuts super easily, and I'm loving the light egg coating on the outside. Let's give it a try. Oh my goodness, that mahi-mahi is fantastic. Super moist fish, no dryness here at all. This lightly fried egg coating actually gives a ton of richness to the bite, and there are big chunks of toasted garlic providing a ton of great flavor. Seasoned absolutely beautifully, no bland fish here. And you also get a hint of nuttiness coming from the sesame seeds as well. I'm in love, I actually really like the mahi-mahi here. Alrighty, next up we're doing the teriyaki beef. Got a nice fork full here, and I'm such a huge fan of teriyaki beef, I hope the one here at Ipono is good. I will say I've got some mixed feelings on this one. The beef is slightly tough, there's a lot more chew here than I'm typically used to for a teriyaki beef. It's also a little borderline dry, which is surprising because typically teriyaki beef is a lot more wet. Now the flavor of the teriyaki is actually quite nice. A good balance of salty and sweet, and there's actually really nice hits of garlic in this as well. If the beef was just a little more tender and juicy, or maybe just a lot more sauce applied, and then I think this would be really good teriyaki beef. Alrighty, next up is the tuna poke. I actually love the color of the orange sauce here, making me think that there's going to be some heat to this. Let's give it a shot. Oh yeah, that poke is very good. I actually love the tuna fish here. It's supple, it's firm, and it has a nice concentrated tuna flavor. The poke sauce that it's drowned in is very good. Very creamy up front with a nice salty hit coming from the row. Not as spicy as I was originally anticipating, but there is a nice heat in the back end. There's also a really nice earthy nuttiness that's coming from the sesame oil here. I have no serious complaints, the tuna poke is very good. Alrighty, next up, mac salad. Macaroni salad is a huge staple in Hawaiian cuisine, and I'm hoping the one here at Aipono Cafe is good. I mean, it looks good to me. Let's give it a try. Oh wow, that is really good mac salad. I actually love the textures here. The macaroni is cooked perfectly. It still retains a nice chew. The bits of celery and carrots provide a really nice crunch in the middle of the bite, and the dressing is super smooth. You get a really creamy and rich flavor up front that eventually gives way to a really delicious black pepper aftertaste. I gotta tell you, I'm actually in love with the mac salad. This is really good. Alrighty, last but certainly not least, let's try the furikage rice. Now that both the teri beef and the mahi mahi was sitting on top of this, so I imagine it's been able to soak up a little bit of those flavors. But I'm Asian and I love rice. This is gonna be good no matter what, right? Let's see. Oh yeah, that's good. 
Great cook to the rice here. It's not soggy, it's not dry. Great texture to it, and it really is just the perfect vessel for the rest of this food. The bite that I had was able to take up some of that mahi-mahi flavor. It had some garlic in there. No complaints for me on the rice. All right, everyone, and that's my dinner here at Ipono Cafe. I love this place, it was so good. Now, I only have two restaurants remaining in the exploration of the Your Art Out Food Hall at Durango Station. I'll be back tomorrow for lunch to check out the first of the two, and then we're gonna round things out. Don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. All right, everyone, so I'm back for lunch today, and I'm starting off at You Me Sushi. Now, I haven't actually been to the downtown Las Vegas location, but I'm excited to check it out here. Let's go ahead and look at the menu to start. Now here's the drink menu at Yurumi Sushi. Feel free to take a pause in the video if you would like to look at your favorite drink. These all have some pretty uh, unique names, so I'm not going to have a lot of insight into these. But yeah, pretty good looking... Uh, at least a very cool looking beverage menu here. And I still gotta get back to work after this, so I don't think I'm gonna be doing any drinking. Just water today. Let's go and see what they've got to eat next. Now the menu actually splits open, which is pretty cool here. Let's take a look at what they've got. Here are all of the appetizers. Things like uh, gyoza, crispy rice, common uh, appetizers you see at Japanese restaurants like this. Here is the sashimi list as well. Very cool. Here are the traditional rolls up top. And then what looks like the chef's menu down here. Lots of really good looking uh, of dishes. Beef sukiyaki, unagi don. Oh yeah, this all looks really good. You have your specialty rolls and vegan rolls down here. And you got salads up top on the right. Your sushi list. We have miso soup here and uh, other sides. And a kids menu and dessert as well. Yeah. Now I do have to get an Italian dinner in tonight, so I don't think I'm gonna go too ham for lunch today. But I will get my order in and I'll catch in a little bit when my food arrives. All right, first up I got their truffle hamachi roll. This was the first item listed in their specialty roll, so I thought I'd give it a try. And I was able to smell the truffle as soon as they put it down. Looks like a little bit of a creamy sauce on top. Let's give it a go. I'm not sure if I would exactly say that's my favorite sushi roll I've ever had. I had to work through a lot of the rice before I got to the flavorful portions on the top. I will say the sushi rice is really nice. It's not dry, but it's not slimy either. However, excellent sushi requires excellent rice, so I am glad they have that down. Now, the most unfortunate part here is that the flavor of the yellowtail is kind of lost. I wouldn't say truffle is overpowering, but it is definitively the dominant flavor profile. Let's introduce a new element by dipping it into some soy sauce and wasabi and we give that a shot. Oh yeah, the soy sauce definitely helps. The introduction of the wasabi soy sauce is really nice here because you get a nice salty hit up front. It does lead the way to a little bit of the spice coming from that wasabi, which is then rounded out by the truffle. Actually, all the flavors combined are very nice. Maybe just slightly less of this truffle aioli and you make sure that you dip it in that soy sauce. This is actually pretty good. Alrighty, next up we're gonna try the poke nachos. Now I believe this is a truffle poke nacho as well. The chip does feel super crispy in my hands. Got a nice little cherry tomato here with some avocado. I'm actually pretty excited for this. Let's give it a shot. Oh yeah, that's excellent. Right off the bat, you get a beautiful crisp from that wonton chip. Nice and crispy without being very greasy. The avocado in my bite provided a really nice richness, where I did get a hint of sweetness from the cherry tomato as well. I can't necessarily say I taste a ton of the tuna, but I will say that the truffle element here is very subtle, which I really like. There is a nice heat here provided by the deseeded jalapenos, and it's rounded out by a really nice freshness from the cilantro. But then the whole bite transforms as you start to taste more of that sauce. It's a spicy mayo providing extra heat as well as a really nice richness to the bite. I'm a fan, I actually really like these nachos. 
Alrighty folks, next up I'm going to try some salmon sushi. Now judging from the rice on that specialty roll, I've got high hopes here. You can actually tell that the rice is holding its texture as well as its form. You can even apply a little bit of pressure with your fingers and it's not falling apart. Let's give it a taste. You know what, that's pretty good. I really have no complaint with the sushi rice here at you or me. They definitely should keep that going. I will say the flavor of the salmon here is a little milder than I'm typically used to. It was lacking a certain brightness. I also noticed there was a distinct lack of a little bit of spice. And you can actually see here they didn't apply the tiny dab of wasabi that you typically see in those traditional spots. That little dab of wasabi is meant to really liven up your tongue and help you appreciate more of the flavors. Because when you have a delicate fish flavor, you need something to counterbalance that. Kind of the way you can really determine how hot something is because you know how cold something can be. Let's go ahead and dip this into the soy sauce and give this a shot as well. Oh yeah, very tasty. The salty umami from that soy sauce as well as the spice coming from that wasabi is really welcome here. Really rounds out for a nice sushi bite. I wouldn't say it's the best salmon I've ever had, but it is good. All right, folks, now I know I said I wasn't going to go too crazy during lunch day because I still have to do a pasta dinner tonight, but... I really love unagi bowls, so I wanted to give theirs a try. Comes loaded with eel and avocado, all on top of some furikage rice. Definitely looking forward to this one. Oh yeah, that's good. Now I guess there's no better way to describe this than a deconstructed eel roll, but that said, all of the elements are very good. You can really see how beautifully fatty this eel is. It's just glistening in the light. The eel has a beautiful sweetness to it and a slightly smoky note as well. I mean, I adore Japanese eel like this. I really don't have any complaints with the avocados here at Yorimi Sushi. They're ripe, they're fresh, they have great flavor. And again, I really have no complaints when it comes to the rice. Yeah. Oh yeah, I can eat that rice for days. I have no real complaints with the onagi bowl, it's good. All right, folks, and that does it for my lunch here at Yorubi Sushi. I did go a little overboard, probably ordered a little more than I should have because I am still gonna go for that pasta dinner tonight at Fiorella, the last restaurant I need to try here at Eat Your Heart Out. Now, I'm looking forward to concluding this food tour and seeing the last restaurant and what they've got. I'm hoping you are as well. Don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. All right, everyone, so I'm seated here for dinner at Fiorella's. And I absolutely love the open kitchen concept and in general, a very beautiful restaurant. Let's go and take a look at the menu and see what they got. So here's your menu at Fiorella's. All of your appetizers at the top left. Cocktails on the right here. Here's your pasta list. All of that looking really good there. Looks like some desserts. And then here are your beers, uh, as well as wine by the glass. A nice condensed menu here. Let's go and get that order in, and for you at home, I'm gonna make that food appear right now. All right, folks, now my first dish is here. Let me give you a view. This is their mozzarella in Corosa. It basically looks like fried mozzarella in a tomato sauce. I do kind of like this lollipop setup, though. Let's see how this tastes. You have to do Oh yeah, that's pretty good. It has a very enjoyably crispy exterior. A little bit flaky as well, almost akin to a fried chicken texture. Though personally, I do think the breading could use a little bit of additional seasoning. It's a tad bland. The mozzarella inside does have a nice cheese pull. It has a certain richness and saltiness, although I wouldn't say it's the best mozzarella cheese I've ever had. I'm gonna go ahead and scoop on some of this tomato sauce. And give this a shot. Unfortunately, I say the sauce is just okay. The sauce is certainly well seasoned. There's a lot of nice garlic flavor in there, but it has a bit of a metallic quality to it. The sauce is a bit harsh. It could definitely use some sugar to cut down on the edge of that acid. Now, earlier I was mistaken when I thought these were breadcrumbs or like a breading. It's actually just bread. It looks like it's a deep fried loaf that's been stuffed with the cheese. Though I guess that does explain why I thought the breading was a little bland. Overall, I wouldn't say it's terrible, but it's not the best. All right, everyone, now my main entree for the evening is here. Let me go in and give you a view. This is the ricotta gnocchi. 
you know, brown butter sauce. Got one of the gnocchis on the fork here. Let's see how it tastes. You know what, that's pretty good. I actually really like the brown butter sauce here. It provides such a nice richness as well as a nutty flavor. The gnocchi balls are incredibly soft. However, it gives way to a really nice ricotta filling in the center. I really appreciate how the flavors go from a little bit nutty from that brown butter, which then gives way to that slightly sweet but rich ricotta cheese flavor. Let's try the accompanying fried leaves here. A little translucent, thinly shaved. Let's see how it is. Yeah, those are very nice. Ever so slight, crispy and salty. It's very akin to the sweetness of caramelized onions with a bit more of a floral hit at the end. I actually really like that, it's quite good. Now let's go ahead and try the two together. We'll see how this is. Oh yeah, those play really nicely together. Because the gnocchi shares a similar texture to the cheese inside, it's really nice getting that juxtaposition with the fried leaves. You know, I don't actually have any serious complaints. I actually do like this dish. Alrighty, next up I'm gonna try the cacio pepe. Cacio pepe is literally just cheese and peppers. A very simple and straightforward dish. I got a nice fork full here. Let's give it a shot. Oh yeah, that's actually really good. Beautiful cook on the pasta. The noodles are perfectly al dente. A nice firm chew there. It's really satisfying to eat. The flavor of the black pepper is so pronounced here. I love it. Really provides a nice kick to the bite. The cheese butter here is incredibly rich and salty. But I actually appreciate that the black pepper is the predominant flavor. I'm a fan. I actually really like the cacio pepe here. All right, everyone. I gotta tell you, I am stuffed after how much I've been eating the last couple of days here. But it is time for the final bite of Eat Your Heart Out. I went with the panna cotta today for a little dessert, and this is looking really good. Let's give it a try. Oh yeah, that's very tasty. Immediately you get a nice butterscotch flavor. I absolutely love the poached pears here. It provides such a fruity freshness to the panna cotta. The granola bits here provide a nice texture contrast with their crunchiness. And in general, it's all very good. I will say the texture of the panna cotta itself is a little softer than I would prefer. I wish they would firm it up just a little bit. That said, it does have a nice, clean, sweet flavor to it. No serious complaints, I do like this one. All right, folks, and that does it for my tour of the newly opened Eat Your Heart Out Food Hall at the Durango Station. If I had to be completely honest with you, I think this is the best food hall in the entire Las Vegas Valley. My personal favorite eateries was I Pono Cafe as well as Sean Artisan Noodles. But honestly, I don't really think I had a bad meal here. While usually I'm a fan of Team Buffet, I actually really enjoy checking out all of the eateries here at Eat Your Heart Out. They've got a really good thing going. Now speaking of food halls, the Fontaine Blue is opening this coming week and of course I'm going to be checking out that food hall as well. And so that's going to be the video that you see next. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a great week and I'll catch you next Saturday. Bye.